Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to create a flow of red blood cells in Maya 2017 using the MASH toolset. In this tutorial, I'm mainly going to cover getting this animation set up. I will quickly go over my basic scene setup, how to create the red blood cells, and the render settings. But the focus for this video is the animation itself, and it's actually quite quick to do. So just to quickly go over my scene setup, here I have an AI sky. To set this up, you need to go to render settings, you can put your chosen HDRI image based lighting file here. I will put a link in the description to some websites where you can go and find some of these files for free. This adds nice atmospheric reflections to the scene. I have also popped in some AI area lights. I'm going to even out these numbers. I've also changed the light shape to disc. I've also got a standard directional light. So I'm going to clear this up and we can begin modelling the red blood cell. So let's place a polygon cube in our scene. And in the modeling menu, go to Mesh and Smooth. I'm happy to keep the divisions at two. In the Attribute Editor, go to Smooth Mesh and check the Smooth Mesh preview box. Now we have a nice sphere. The plane I have set up in the background could cause some troubles. So with the plane selected, I'm going to go to Channel Layer Editor and go down to Layer Create layer from selected. Now I can restrict the selection of the object by clicking twice on the empty checkbox. Now back to our cell. So right click and enter vertex selection mode. Select the central top and bottom vertices. Then you have two options. You can open up the tool settings by double clicking on the selection arrow. I have moved the menu over here to keep it handy. Here you can enable soft select and adjust the fall off radius. Alternatively, if you hold down the B key on your keyboard and click and drag, this will also adjust the fall off radius. So now that we're happy with the shape of our cell, we're going to open the Hypershade and I have an AI standard material that I made earlier. I'm going to assign this to the object by clicking and dragging with the middle mouse button. Let's preview this by going to the Arnold menu up here and clicking Arnold Render View. So I've put a nice red as a diffuse and I'm going to even up some of these numbers here in the specular settings. In reflection, I have no settings set up. And here I have a bump map, which is an AI noise bump. And I have scaled this down to 0.05. Just quickly, in case you don't know how to set this up, let's go to Hypershade menu and type in AI noise. And middle mouse click and drag. From here, you can middle mouse drag it into your AI standard. So back we go, you can see my settings here. If you want a better look at your bump map, then you can go to Render, Debug Shading and Isolate Selected. You can't see it very well here because it's very subtle, but this may come in useful for you at some point. I've also added a little bit of subsurface scattering. Now we're ready to set up the animation. Go to the panel view and enter the front view by hitting the space bar whilst the cursor is hovering over the view. We want to create a curve by going to Create, Curve Tools and the CV Curve Tool. And click, click, click and press Enter to complete the curve. Back in Perspective view, right click the curve and select Control Vertex. We can now move these points around. Now I'm done with it, right click and go back into object mode. 
I'm going to hide these lights as they are getting in the way. I'm going to show and unchecking the lights. We are now ready to animate. With the cell selected, go to the Mash tab and click on the Mash Awaiter. In the Attribute Editor, add a Curve node. Take the curve that we made and middle mouse click and drag it over to the Input Curves box. Press Play and we have something pretty useless to begin with. As we play with the curve settings, we can change the animation speed, the steps and the time step variation. We want to keep Calculate Rotation on so that the cell follows flat along the shape of the curve. Up at the top, if we go to the Distribute tab, we can start getting a bit more control over the red blood cells. So we are automatically distributing the cells in a linear mode. This may be quite useful if the cells need to be very tightly confined, say if you are animating the cells in capillaries etc. I like to use the grid option as it gives you specific control over the distance and number of cells within the grid. So this still doesn't look like what we need, so we need to add a random node. As soon as we start playing with these controls, it makes it look a bit more natural. You can go back into the curve and distribute settings now and play with the settings until you are happy. When you add your geometry into a mesh network, the smooth mesh is turned off. So just select your mesh and turn on the smooth mesh preview in the attribute editor. So I want to add a slight wiggle to the cells to give the impression that they're travelling through a liquid and there's some friction going on. So for this we need to go to the strength settings in the random node. Here you can add a map and I'm going to add a noise to this. You will see that the cells begin to move and slightly rotate randomly following the noise of the map. I'm actually not happy with the amount of wiggle in my final renders, so I suggest not having as crazy a map as this. I got a bit too excited and it's too late to go back now. Now I'm going to make a camera. This can be found in the rendering tab. The easiest way to move this is to go into panels, perspective and camera one. In the render settings, I'm going to keep mine at HD 720, as I'm just doing this as an example. Change the renderable camera to your camera that you just set up. I'm going to render the sequence as TIFFs. Back in the camera settings in the attribute editor, we need to scroll down to the Arnold tab and we will apply some depth of field. So check the DOF box. We need to now calculate the depth of field distance. Go back into perspective view, go to create, measure tools and distance tool. Take one of the locators and then click this button which is the snap to point option. Move it slightly and it will snap to the camera. Now deselect this option. 
move the other locator to wherever you like. We can now see the distance between the cell and the camera. We can put this value into the depth of field settings. Initially, I'm going to make the aperture 0.2 and the aperture blades 7. And I'm lowering the aperture to 0.05. Actually, let's make the 0.03. A couple of render settings to consider here. When using depth of field, the camera AA value, which controls the anti-aliasing, may need increased. This will help soften up the edges, which become very grainy if these settings are too low. This will depend on your machine how quickly this goes. I have a pretty low power machine, so I'm going to keep all these settings low. In the system settings, I'm going to reduce the bucket size to 32. You can keep this higher if you've got a better laptop or computer than me. You can see that this runs quite slowly and it will take a while to render whilst the computer is calculating the MASH network. To avoid this, we can create a cache from the MASH network by selecting the MASH waiter, going to the MASH tab and selecting cache. I find that all these settings work quite well. Click apply and save it. It will now go through and calculate each frame. Now that that's done, we need to import it. Go to Cache and Import Alembic. Don't panic, it hasn't ruined your material. It's created another mesh with the cached animation. You can now delete the original Mash Repro mesh, turn Smooth Mesh Preview back on and assign your material again. You can see that it's actually working a bit faster and it will also render faster. You can now render out the sequence using your preferred settings. Thank you for watching, hopefully you've learned something. If you enjoyed this video please head over to my channel to see more medically arty videos and tutorials.